space exploration has brought with it numerous advances and changes to the world. To understand the complexities of space across the globe, various innovations and technologies have been developed to understand it. One of them being LIGO or the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. In the United States, there are already two such observatories. Our next report tells you about the third such cutting-edge gravitational wave observatory that will be built in India. Odyssey continues to flourish. The country has established itself firmly as a space power. With homegrown technology, India's space agency ISRO has an enviable track record. It has successfully launched about 420 satellites from 34 different countries. India's Chandrayaan was the first mission to detect water on the moon. The country also entered the interplanetary realm by successfully launching Mangalayan as part of its Mars Orbiter mission. The mission cost $4.5 billion, which is 10 times less than a similar mission of NASA. And now India is embarking upon another ambitious project to explore the mysteries of our cosmos. The Narendra Modi government has given the go-ahead for what would be the country's biggest scientific facility. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, India or LIGO India, will be built in Hengol district in Maharashtra. The $317 million project will join the ongoing global project to probe the universe by detecting and studying gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space and time, caused by violent processes such as black holes colliding. They were predicted by Albert Einstein more than a century ago as part of his theory of general relativity. Einstein theorized that mass warped space and time through its gravitational force. In 2015, US-based LIGO finally confirmed with the first ever direct observation of gravitational waves. The facility consists of two identical underground detectors about 3,000 kilometers apart. LIGO India will be located about 450 kilometers east of Mumbai. The setup is expected to be completed by 2030. The state-of-the-art facility will aid in a more thorough knowledge of gravitational waves as well as other celestial phenomena like neutron stars and black holes. LIGO India is a sign that the country is at the forefront of taking on difficult scientific initiatives independently. It will also have huge spin-off benefits for the country's science and technology sector. Bureau Report, we on World is One. Let's now talk about this big feat by India. We are now being joined by Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, live from Washington, D.C. Ghosh is a space scientist at NASA, the United States of America. Amitabh, welcome to WeOn. Absolutely. What does it mean for India space exploration missions following the approval of LIGO India by the cabinet? I think it's a very big deal. So just to back up a little bit and expand on what you just showed a little before. This is a very new way of looking at the universe. Um, first, first, let me tell you why telescopes are the primary way we can reach out to the universe. Um, the universe has a trillion stars and each um, in a galaxy, and then there are a trillion galaxies. So that would be 10 followed by 24 zero stars, one followed by 24 zero stars. So we need telescope technology to be the best. So, so far, 
telescopes means we are dependent on light, various frequencies of light. That's what we use. So gravity waves is another way of looking at the universe or hearing the universe or however you can frame it. It's like we we look through eyes and we can also use our ears. This is like you're, you're starting to use your ears for the first time. Now, um, gravity waves have like, how would you detect a black hole? A black hole absorbs all the light. So how do you detect it? So Einstein theorized it in maybe 2015, but it's only... Sorry, 1900s, late 1900s, but it was only in 2015 that uh, a LIGO instrument confirmed the existence of black holes. Similarly, we use so many elements in our life, but did you know that hydrogen and helium can be just produced in our own sun? Mm -hmm. Between helium and iron, everything else can be produced in a much massive star. And beyond that, everything that we see beyond that, all elements, they have to be produced in neutron stars, supernovas, etc. And how do you confirm that? So the gravity meters are a way to confirm that. Then, you know, you think of space-time, right? It's very confusing, Einstein's rel relativity. The, one of the most confusing parts which of relativity is time is relative. In other words, if you are on a spaceship um, traveling at half the speed of light and I am on Earth, time passes very differently. Uh, time passes very very slowly if you're traveling very fast. So it's a very, uh, the, the, the fact that time can be relative and not constant in different places is very confusing. Mm -hmm. But again, this LIGO technology is one of the ways to uh, verify it. So it, it's kind of a different window to answer a lot of things of the universe, like uh, there are questions about dark matter and dark energy um so so there is a lot going on with how the universe is deformed in space time right. doctor, by large objects ro doctor yes. that's a lot of explanation I'm, I'm also trying to understand all you have said but i just uh, right. want you to explain a little further about this gravitational waves but uh, before you do that what would you say are the prospects of india on space missions what will it take for ISRO, for example, to reach NASA's levels? See, this is already at the forefront. I wouldn't, I mean, this is already at the forefront. There are two other observatories like that. So, so you know, it is very difficult to compare, um, as you said, NASA's levels. So different frontiers have different benchmarks, right? Mm -hmm. So here I would say this is kind of at the frontier. I mean, this will be very futuristic and um, will... Uh, address many new questions that have never been answered or even questions which never have been asked. So it's, I would say this is um, a very futuristic project. Right. Futuristic project indeed. I want to know from you, tell us more about uh, what India hopes to achieve with this LIGO project. So one of the most difficult things in science and in these types of projects is um, what is going to be discovered. So you can understand, uh, see, it is like this term called serendipity. So you kind of don't know out there. You can figure it out only after you see the data and you see interesting correlations and um, you can deduce something. Um, so uh, uh, for Earth, um, um, I would say that if you, if you think of the Hubble Space Telescope, the way one of the most dis important discoveries of the Hubble was accidental. Uh -huh. um, and that's how um, it, it was the discovery of an estimate of how much stars and galaxies are there in the, in the universe. But so, so here I would say that there would be refinements of existing theories and um, a lot of, uh, and some of what, Albert Einstein hypothesized can be verified um, in terms of um, with real data. Uh, but other than that, I would say um, it is very hard to forecast what is going to come out of it. <laughs> this is a lot. Like it's, it's, with, uh -huh. it's with the Mars missions, right? I mean, yeah. uh, so, the you know, there's a Mars uh, samples are going to be returned. But w will you find life? Well, nobody knows. 
Nobody so, knows indeed. Um, Nobody knows indeed, right. Doctor. <laughs> we'll have to right. leave it there. There's a lot to ponder for both our viewers and myself. But uh, Dr. Amitabh Gohosh, thank you very much for talking to We On While It Is One today. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.